Hello guys and dolls. Hopefully this will work out because it didn't work out a minute ago and I'm getting warm already. Holy mackerel. Okay, so uh, how have I been feeling? Well, <laughs> I have been in pain every day with this foot and the ankle and the tibia doesn't really hurt that bad and it was fractured pretty good too in a couple of spots not just where they put it together surgically but it's i just busted up everything in there basically um i'm doing somewhat better but the ankle and the foot you know wow it's pretty rough um every day is pretty rough there's no day that it walking is easy um pardon me i have gum in my mouth i wanted some fresh breath anyway so, um, that's what's going on there. I'm still taking pain medication, not heavy duty pain medication because they take that away from you after like two weeks. And, um, you know, that's how that works. They don't want you addicted, even though I'm not, I don't have an addictive personality. So I don't really have to worry about that sort of thing, but that's the protocol. So whatever. I have a doctor now, a new surgeon. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I got a different surgeon because the other one was crap. You do not ever allow a patient to wake up from surgery in agony and you'll give them medication later. How'd you like someone doing that to you? Hello. Common sense, which isn't really that common. So, excuse me for a second. Go ahead and get rid of the gum so I'm not... You know, real life, people, real life. Okay, so uh, I wanted to talk to you about something um, serious in regards to narcissistic relationships, um, abusive relationships where your partner is exceedingly jealous. It doesn't have anything to do with you. It has a lot more to do with your partner than it has to do with you. They text all the time. They call all the time. Where are you at? What are you doing? Who are you talking to? Why are you talking to that person? Blah, blah, blah. And it always escalates. Let me repeat that. It always escalates. When a person is that controlling, that never goes in good places. And it can result in people getting hurt. And it can result in people getting killed. Because the rage and the jealousy is a lot of times not even warranted you know you could have been talking to somebody quietly about a surprise birthday party for someone else in the crowd you know all the friends hanging together and then your partner says later on why were you up in his face or her face like that why were you so up in their grill what's that and you're like actually we were talking about a surprise party for so and so yeah, right. You mean to tell me you were this close to somebody and you were talking about a party and it escalates and escalates and escalates. Um, this particular incident that I'm going to be talking to you about is pertaining to a guy who lied about everything. Um, he's supposedly a homicide detective. They never did say what kind of work he really did. Um, I think he was... Oh, he was still married to someone else, but he started this new relationship with this new girl. And this is a true story. And he became engaged to her and they started popping kids out. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, how do I know those kids are mine? You know, um, and you know, who are you talking to? What are you doing? Why did it take you so long to do your job? today you normally it takes you 20 minutes today it took you 25 minutes what's that all about and it just got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse when a person is that rageful and that possessive it only escalates and it escalated to the point where especially when she decided i don't want to deal with this anymore he was spending a lot of their money he was blowing money just throwing it out the window um he was just not a nice person. And then they split up, but they were living in the same house and she stayed in another bedroom. Well, that's when the rage is really going to happen because 
this is my control over you is falling apart and they don't want that it makes them desperate and it makes them freak out even worse and he was really wanting to have another baby because that locks her in more the more kids this person has with you the deeper you're locked in and she wasn't really ready for a third kid especially since she sees how he's acting in the whole bit so everything escalated to the point where he jumped in her face how do i know the kids are mine you probably cheated on me who's the kid's father who's the kid's father who's the kid's father and he just went nuts like i said it has nothing to do with her it has to do with him up in here uh and once a person gets on that level and gets that filled with rage there isn't anything that you're going to say to them that's going to make them go, oh, I'm acting psychotic. I don't know why I'm so jealous like that. I don't know what's going on. They're not going to do that. They're going to get worse. So somehow he dragged her into the garage and he premeditated all of this. He threw gasoline on her and he lit a, uh, a candle and he threw the candle on her and it caught her face on fire. And he took off running. He left and... The neighbor heard her screaming and she managed to survive, but her whole face was disfigured from the burns and the surgeries, the multiple surgeries that they had to do and all of this. And when the doctor, when they, not the doctor, but the, the, um, police officer detective came to talk to him. He said, she attacked me. I had no choice but defend myself to defend myself and this and that and the other, which obviously is not true because she had the majority of the, the injuries. So how did she start it? And she made sure she was worse. That doesn't make any sense. And the detective obviously did not believe him. And then he had the nerve to say, uh, and when you walk out, can you tell the doctor I need more pain med? Because he managed to get some minor injuries and the detective's like yeah sure he got out of the room he saw the doctor and he's like like i'm not telling him nothing because he knew that he had doused her with the gasoline and he was the uh aggressor so once a person once you see that in your relationship it doesn't matter how long you've been together they usually start that fairly early uh who are you talking to what are you doing let me see your phone um, who are these text messages from? Who were you on the phone with? And I got in the, I walked in the room and you quit talking. It could have been that the other person was talking. That's why you were not talking. You're not going to get logic in them. Once you see the person start to slide downhill mentally and psychologically, you're not going to get through to them. There is nothing you do or say that will prevent them from going to the crazy page. Even if a doctor said, like in this case where she was assaulted um, and severely injured, the doctor could have said, I did a blood test on your children and they match your DNA. So those are your children. He still wouldn't have believed it because he's psychotic. So it wouldn't make any difference who said what or what proof was there. It makes no difference because that person is, is losing control. And because they're losing control, they get rageful and they get panicky so it has nothing to do with the dna of the kids that's just the vehicle that he used to flip out okay so you know you can't you take that with a grain of salt it has nothing to do with what that person's really complaining about they're losing control over you and it makes them freak out um so i just wanted to touch on that that's a very sensitive thing it does not mean this person loves you oh he, this person texts me all the time and baby i love you so much that's the reason why i keep texting you and and calling you and calling you and calling you and calling you because i love you and i don't want anything to happen to you love should not be you are an animal in a cage that's not love that's prison so recognize that warning sign in the beginning and make sure you start breaking ties with that person because that gets worse and worse and worse and worse and you were cheating i don't care if you weren't cheating you were cheating in their head you were cheating and a lot of times too another thing cheaters will blame you on cheating because if you're defending yourself you don't see what the garbage that they are doing so that's another thing that you need to pay attention to Cheaters blame you for cheating. 
you know, you're, you're the one that's cheating, even though they're the one that's cheating. So that's never a good thing. Get away from that situation. Okay. Get away from that situation. Um, this is going to be a two parter if I have enough time on here. Um, one thing that I wanted to talk to you about is injuries. Um, are you getting out of a cast, for example, your skin's going to look awful. I just want you to know, get ready. Um, your skin's going to look really rough and red and swollen and raw, deformed because of the swelling. Uh, things are just not discolored. You know, when you get out of a cast, don't expect it to be, ta-da, you're better, you're out of your cast. You're going to see some you know, some significant changes until you heal. I still have some swelling going on. I still have pain. Um, my skin is not nowhere near as scaly as it was before. I'm better with that, but the discoloration is still there. The swell swelling is still there. I don't know how much I can show you. Should I get the sock off? I don't know how much I can show you. Let me see if I can back up a little. Come on. Come on. Uh, I don't know if you're going to see anything. I'm pretty flexible, but uh, I don't know. You're not going to see much. Um, I could go this way, though. Hold on. Ah. <laughs> this isn't easy. Okay. You're going to see there's pins and needles right now. Calm down. Calm down. Um, you're going to, you're, you're going to have pain. I mean, there, there's no way around it. You're going to have a lot of pain. I, I think I was in serious denial about how jacked up I was. Um, hold on. Uh, ooh, cool air. I like it. Ooh, that's better. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you're going to have ugly discoloration you're gonna it's just gonna not be a pretty thing um ugh, it's just it's just not gonna be nice um just have patience with yourself until you start to feel better just have patience with yourself and know that things got disrupted in your body and things got broken and and pulled and twisted and all kinds so it's not gonna look good so i don't want you to take your cast off and go <gasps> I want you to be prepared, okay? As prepared as you can be. Uh, yeah, I, I was in denial about how messed up my body was. Really in denial. I knew it was damaged, but once I had my six week x-ray and I wasn't so much better, I'm like, holy mackerel, I did some serious damage in there. Um, I'm no longer in denial. I still have fractures in my tibia that are trying to heal. I think I mentioned that earlier. I did a number on all of it. I did a number on it. There was a guy on YouTube who said, one of the things that you're going to learn when you have an injury like this, you'll learn who your friends are, who your real friends are. Ain't that the truth? Uh, yeah. And he also said something that was really significant. He said, oh, what the heck did he say? You're going to know, you're going to learn what your tolerance for pain is. Oh my God, he is so right. My pain tolerance is through the roof because I had tibia fracture, fibula fracture, ankle fractures, two ankle fractures. And I, they asked me for pay, did I want payments? And I was like, no, I'm okay for now. What? So apparently I've got a much higher pain tolerance than I thought. And I could have still been in shock, I don't know, but I did not want them to manipulate my leg to make it straight in order for them to put the cast on, the temporary cast on. I did not want to do that without pay meds because that is asking for trouble, you know? You're not only busted up and then someone's manipulating those fractures to get your limb straight so they can put a cast on it. Yeah, I wasn't done for that, so I had them sedate me. You know what I'm saying? You gotta know what your limits are. <laughs> 
but um, anyway, so if anybody has any questions, I my full healing is going to take nine months. I mentioned that in another video. It's going to be nine months. Um, in another six weeks, I've already had my first six-week x-ray. There's still fractures in there in the tibia. Um, and then another six weeks, I will have another set of x-rays to see where we're at and to see if I'm able to wear a regular shoe. So I just wanted to let you know what was going on with all of that. And um, I, I, this video is probably all over the place, and I apologize for that. But I'm trying to give you as much information as I can. Also, if you go to Deborah Cooper, and I will put the link in the description of the video, it, I am being interviewed by her on her channel, Deborah Cooper. It's called Jamie's Story, and Deborah is with two R's. But if you don't find it on your own, I'll link it down below, and then you can hear my interview with the abuse that I grew up with, some of the abuse. My God, all the abuse cannot be covered in a 45-minute to an hour interview, but you'll get an insight of what I went through growing up, the hell that I grew up with with my psychotic parents. But anyway, you guys hang in there and I love you and I'll talk to you soon. Alright.